Oh, well, this is unannounced, but here we are, and I am finishing up the painting here. I realize that I still have to do some corrections here. Hi, Katie. And just even out some color. I think I'm gonna leave the skin tone the way it is just because of the lighting and stuff. I think it looks perfect just the way it is. I may correct some stuff in here. And I am okay with the back, with the metal, with the suit in the front, with the scarf. Um, I am okay with Coruscant here. I might touch it up in here and here a little bit more. So, yes. Hello, everyone. Okay. <sighs> All right. So it looks like I have two of you guys here. Hello. Hi. All right. So this is just a very kickback painting session. Talk Star Wars. Finishing up Mara Jade. I was pointing out earlier when I first started what I want to finish up on or touch up on. And basically it is her armband here. I need to even it out a little bit more. And maybe here a little bit, but the background here needs to be evened out a little bit. I do need to paint in here, take off the tape, but that will be separate when I get to lay it flat. Hi, you guys. Yes, so I think I'm pleased with the hair. Um, I may do a few corrections there. The goggles I absolutely love. So yeah, I don't know how well you guys can see that. So thank you for joining me. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well this evening. If you guys have any questions or just, you know, want to chat or ask questions about Star Wars, I am here for you. I only have one person here. That's okay. This is just something to do. Right now I got to mix my paint a little bit and I wish I could show you. Okay, let me see here. So I scraped it up as best I can, but I didn't clean off, but I have my colors here. I got to mix up. This is just a medium that helps with the painting here. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, hello. Hi. Looks like it's just you and I. I don't know if these other ones stayed in or not, but yeah. So we got four. Favorite Star Wars movie. All right. So I have you guys voting on my Twitter on your favorite Star Wars movie, all-time movie out of the six. Not the nine. I'm not counting Disney Star Wars. So um, I'll talk with you guys while I'm mixing this paint, the color I need for that. But um, my favorite Star Wars movie is of all time Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So that's when we get to see Luke progress into a Jedi. We get to see how much work he's put into his training, how he, we get to see his maturity, how much he's matured. You know, because with Anakin, I love my second favorite one is um, Revenge of the Sith. They're almost a close time, but we get to see him progress into Darth Vader. And so on the opposite, we get to see Luke Skywalker mature into a Jedi. And um, so that's why I love that show is because we get to see him become a Jedi Knight and then once we get into the EU then we get to see him figure out how to recreate the Jedi Order and so I think that's just amazing storytelling in general right there so so the colors I am using and I'm mixing right now so I'm just going to educate on some painting as well is I use gambling paint which is the paint that's um, made in the USA you know support our support our um our local businesses, our businesses in the USA. And so this one right here is raw sienna. I don't know if you can see that, there we go. So I'm doing the armband right now. So these are the colors I'm mixing. And then I'm also mixing some burnt umber. This is like almost done with. And this one is just a mess, but this is um, cadmium red light. You really can't see it, I'm, it's messy. Yeah, so I'm using those colors right now to mix. Oh, and a little bit of this um, flake white. Yeah, 
So let me read through here real quick. My fingers, look at, they're already, I'm already a mess. I'm already a mess. So that's what happens when you paint. Um, still here. Yes, I know. It showed that you all disappeared, but then I seen you guys in here. That was weird, but stream yard is weird sometimes. All right. Let's see here. So I have um, Geese. Geese Hero 24. I hope I said that right. And then Dark Cider. Kick. Hello. And yeah, so thank you guys. And whoever else is here, go ahead and share with me here as well what is your favorite um, Star Wars movie. I have, and if you haven't voted on my um, Twitter, go and vote. Go and vote. All right, so let me mix this stuff up. It's, it's for a school project in contemporary math, but also I am going to do that. I'm going to read the results and stuff on um, my YouTube channel. So, so right here, I wish I could. So I took this color, this color, and then right here. And I did a little bit of this um, Dick Van Dyke brown, which is a really dark, dark brown color and mix that all together to form the color of her band, her armband. So let's see how well that mixes up. So. Hey, ABC, how you doing? Hi, S Seth, hi. Hell, hello. Matthew, hello. So. Oh, I think I did that pretty well. And then at the ends, it's a little bit darker because of the shading. Might have to go a little bit darker. I don't know. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. It's always fun. And this is the kind of brush I'm using. It's a flat round type brush. So I really love this kind of brushes here. I have a little bit of music in the background, so hopefully that's not deterring from you guys hearing me. Matthew, okay, let me see. ABC, Revenge of the Sith. Um, let's see, I thought someone was painting a OG Mar Jade like the one of those French girls and I came running. Well, this works too. <laughs> well, no. Okay, Matthew, I got it. In 1983 version of The Return of the Jedi and um, the one I saw when I was a kid in a really crappy two-screen theater. So what's interesting is with me, I got to see um, Empire Strikes Back in a drive-in theater. So I don't know if anybody remembers if you guys ever been to a drive-in theater. Um, we got to see that. And so before we seen that, though, we watched um, Star Wars are basically now a new hope on VHS before we went to go see um, Empire Strike Back at the, um, at the, the, the drive-in theaters. So that's my little story on that. Oh, that's looking good. So when you guys are doing something um, like read or not reading, cleaning the house, I don't know, I'm just throwing things out here, doing a hobby or whatever, what type of music do you guys like to listen to? Let's see, okay. ABC, the ladies have a thing for 19K Fox. I think some of your skills with swooning females could work. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching. I've been I've been behind the scenes, scenes watching, just watching everything go down with the ladies. So um, Daniel Davis, the drive-in near me shut down of only six years ago. That's about the same time with ours as well. Ours is not open anymore. Dark Cider, a new hope because it feels like a complete story so I can still suck it in or stick it <laughs> suck it in um, stick it in for a Star Wars fix without just dedicating time to watch all yeah and in a sense yes and then um, but if you want to further you know see Luke grow then you know that's your option is watching Empire Strikes Back and then Return of the Jedi excuse me Matthew got it. Before I was born in my town, uh, my town had Star Wars and The Wizard of Oz and the double bill like a year before. 
Epimetheus still got drive-ins here in Australia. Wow, that's cool. Saw my saw my most hated movie there, Romeo and Juliet. Really? And I've hated um, DiCaprio since. I was the only person to stay awake through it and watch the Independence Day afterwards. Oh, wow. Yeah, Independence Day is good. I like that one. Hi, Kryptonic. How are you doing? Anything 80s when cleaning? Okay, cool. It depends on my music. Sometimes it's um, it has to be something energetic for me. So sometimes it could be um, pop. Sometimes it could be rap, whatever. Um, hard rock metal, yes. When I am doing art, either something I can sing with or something with a good driving or driving vest. And hey, shock, oh, that jumped. Skywalker's Jedi Academy. I like to listen to rock music or pop music when I'm drawing. Okay. Hey, Abunas, how are you doing? Seriously, honey, my notification went off waking me up and I'm like, how, how up? at 1 a.m. in the morning now about <laughs> dang you jumped on that thank you for coming in i mean i'm sorry for waking you uh radio jap a japanese funk pop band i like something to move to yes i agree the first move movies i can remember seeing are um, gremlins and ghostbusters return of the jedi i saw in 1985 and it's release. cool Abunas, and I remember you're on the West Coast, laugh out loud. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm still, yes, it's still kind of early here, Abu. It's still early. Okay, I need a better brush. I need something thinner. So let's reach in there. Here we go. Oof, that was not a good sight. Sorry, you guys. All right. Oh, it jumped again. Electric Blue's cool. I'm just a sucker for the 80s gen, um, genre. Don't matter pop rock as long as it's 80s. Yes, that's a good one too. Is your is my art for fun or professional? Um, I am in the process. I have a website already up. I just have to put all my images on there so they could start selling. I do have Luke Skywalker um, copies. I'm not going to grab them because my hand's a mess right now. Um, so I do have them for sale. They're eight by ten. Um, they're fifteen dollars signed and numbered. The original though is a lot more. Thank you, Abu. It's just a little tiny bit. So Abu says your painting looks great. Looks finished. Just about. It's just nearly finished. I just have to even out some some of the background colors and you know take care of minor details. My I'm the kind of person that gets picky with stuff. And copies of this painting will be um, available too as well if you guys want to purchase um, um, a copy 8x10 is what I'm going to get printed again. However, if you want bigger copies, then we I can arrange that. Or if you want to buy the actual painting from me, then we can arrange that as well. All right, Matt, um, let's see where we're at. Matthew, the EU was perfect for me because I started collecting the books and comics in high school. Awesome. I had the... Um, THX versus VHS. <laughs> it's so funny reading about VHSs now these days. Um, set of Star Wars from Fox Video. Yes. Hello, how are you doing? I'm going to turn up the music a little bit more. Let's see here. This kind of brush right here is very, very tiny. I don't know if you could see the brush head on that. It's not going to focus. But it's good for lining and making straight lines. You have to have a straight hand, though. Sometimes that's hard. 
And so if you guys, if you guys haven't had a chance to every Monday night, I am with Toxic Femininity. And so I just got off with the show with the ladies. It was fun. We got to discuss a lot of Star Wars about George Lucas, about Obi-Wan, even about um, people um, shaming white men. And so we, we basically break the narrative of what feminism is, what they are trying to make fem feminism today. So um, that's our thing in that we are women of pop culture. Do you have an Instagram also, or just your personal site? I do have an Instagram and I need to start sharing it. So I will share that in um, in the comments or in my um, description below. Do you have, okay, um, what city is the is that meant to be in the background for your painting? That's Coruscant. And so um, last time I had a live stream when I was painting her, I kind of, I described why I was doing this. I'm gonna make it a little bit. So here is the Coruscant and I got this off of, um, the book Outcast with Luke Skywalker. The book's not here, it's over there now. Um, it's with my book collection. And Mara Jade, she basically doesn't know who her parents are or where she was born at, her planet, the planet she was born at, but she was raised by the emperor. And so my my guess is because he based you know everything on Coruscant, um, that basically that's her home. And so I decided to put this in the background. This is before she became a Skywalker. So you see her with the Skywalker saber when Luke gave it to her after, um, at the end of um, the Thrawn trilogy. And um, was it called Last Command? Yeah, Last Command. And so we have her here and this is pre-Skywalker, pre Mar Jade Skywalker. So she's still Mar Jade. Let's see here. This is, uh, let's see here. Thank you. I, I enjoy being on with the ladies. It's so much fun just to be able to sit there and just have us disgusting in, in our, in our point of view and, you know, break the narrative that a lot of women in um, modern times now put on us. Okay, I like the cover of Shadows of Mindor. Oh, that's a good cover. That is a great cover. That is a great Luke cover. I agree. I totally agree with that. My son's school has a VHS as part of the obsolete technology display. I feel old. <laughs> that's bad. You know, when when you know we look back at eight tracks, you know, and then records then CD our tapes, then CDs, and now we're basically just technology is just on your phone now. So it's crazy. It's crazy how everything evolved. Love the OG and prequels. Can't remember um, when I got into Star Wars. I remember one Christmas, my aunt got me a series of books from the OG. Thank you. I appreciate the comments. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Hi, Soul Assassin. How are you doing? Matthew got it. Star Wars Inferno is also another great cover. Yes. And that's my favorite book out of Legacy of the Force. Um, like, I like it. I liked imagining what Mark Hamill would have looked like in as Grandmaster Luke. I think in, I think he would have, um, like when you look at some of Luke Skywalker's image from that time era, and then you look at Mark Hamill, they, it, there's a lot of similarities. So, you know, I, I like to see that as, I like to see that he, that's him already, or that's how he would have looked like. Let's see here. The last Wednesday night um, night mayhem was a damn good stream. So I recommend anyone who missed it, go watch it. Yes, that was amazing. We had such a good time. Hey, lady. Hey, Ruthie. How are you doing? Hi. How's everything going, darling? Oh. Oh, oh where'd it go? Did I, uh, anyone remember mixtapes? I, I do. I remember sitting by next to my radio, my first job. Um, I saved up my money. I worked at a in the office at an elders building. I saved my money up. 
and got me my first little rate, my first stereo system speakers. I learned how to hook up speakers. I got really into speaker, you know, the stereo systems and stuff. And I remember sitting by my stereo with my blanket, my pillow, and maybe a journal or a drawing or something and pressing play every time the radio station, not play, but record every time a radio station would play um, my favorite song. So, and I still have a few tapes. Let me see. Oh, yes. It's, I'm like dusting it off. Now that's nostalgic. Remember taking and like if they got stuck or even splicing them and cutting them or taping them back together if they broke. Thank you, Ruthie. Love you, darling. Love you. I asked a younger sister not by much to try playing a record on the other day. She couldn't figure out where to put the needle. I am 30. <laughs> just chilling, just woke up. Yes, you work, you work some odd hours, darling, huh? Okay, sweetheart, it's time for me to go back to sleep. Only four hours of sleep before I get before I get up for work. Well, thank you for dro dropping in. Anyways, I appreciate it. You know, you didn't need to. You know, I understand you have to work. You know, you're on a schedule. That's fine. This is very spontaneous. Thank you for coming in, Abunas. Kryptonic. Oh, Lord. Mixtapes have about 50 or so here in my office on a shelf. Have a great evening. See you tomorrow night. Yes. See you tomorrow night. All right. DJ, Dr. Um, Jagus. I, I hope I said that right. Nice. Get a pin and fix it. And I think I, I did takes for a long time, even when they weren't popular anymore. I still, I still have like a box full of tapes and stuff and I don't have a tape player anymore. And I still have a lot of CDs as well. Yes, I remember having to fix so many tapes like that. Laugh out loud, yes. Anyone remember when floppy disks were big enough to eat, to eat dinner off of? Oh my God, really? Holy crap. Okay, I'm gonna go back right here real quick. I got to get this part done. Oh, I hate when I do that. I can go back and correct that. Let's see here. <laughs> oh yeah, good old OG floppy disks. I don't remember those. I've heard of them. We're retro. I got a lot of retro people here. You guys are awesome. Taking it back. Let's see here. I think I got all of that. I'm like all looking to make sure I have everything covered that I need to. Let's see here. Organ trail was good and dying and dying of the century. <laughs> yes. I think I remember playing that. I think it was required. I was, I barely. Hey, Wookie Supremacy, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is just a kickback painting stream, finishing up my Mara Jade here. Again, the, this is for sale and then copies to I'm um, getting eight by tens printed. And I'm supposed to be doing a contest on Twitter to win a copy and I haven't been on task with that. I apologize. And so I will start up again tomorrow. <laughs> I need to be accountable. And um, 
I do have the last ones I did. I do have the winners from that. And whoever guesses the most of those quotes that are about Marjade or what she states, her quotes are about her, what novels they go to or source they go to, will win a copy of the painting. I'm not sure if I'm rich or just old. In the, in the woods of the late great Bob Ross, are the words, not the woods, I need my glasses on. Um, there are no mistakes, only happy little accidents. Yes, and I used to love watching him on PBS. I used to, you know, it's just my, it was my thing. It was my thing to nerd out on when I was younger, growing up, is because I love drawing and painting and all that. Most of this is just self-taught here, so. Matthew got it. Who do you think should play Mara Jade in a live action project by Lucasfilm? Not that Disney Lucasfilm, but can be trusted to do the EU any justice. Um, I never really gave that a thought. Um, I know Shannon, what's her last name? I have her a friend on Facebook. She's the model for Mara Jade, but I don't know, um, you know, if she would be capable of playing her. All right. So I'll put this here. So you guys, answer, think about it and put it in the comments. Who should play Mara Jade if there was ever an actual live action show and we would get actual Mara Jade with actual Luke Skywalker, Ben Skywalker, all that. I don't want to imagine her without any of her family. Honestly, do you think I ever finished an episode of Bob Ross painting? His voice for me was an insta coma, <laughs> always knocked me out. It's, it was very, very relaxing. But because I like that kind of stuff, it was, um, to me, it was fun. So, but that's just probably because of, I like to paint and draw and stuff. Okay, Wookiee Supremacy, yeah, but I've seen some jacked up paintings from Ross followers full of tragic mistakes. <laughs> oh, God dang it. <laughs> oh, I was going to do a different color. That's funny. I think Ross was the inventor of ASMR, something addictive about his voice. I see a spot here that is, um, I could still see the underpainting. So I do, when I, when I paint, so here's a little history, a little art lesson right here. And everybody starts their paintings and the drawings off different. But when I do that, I do an underpainting and I don't have an underpainting to show you guys. But um, are you sometimes I'll draw, draw with a red or blue draft pencil. Um, those are primary colors, so they basically blend in really well with the colors, and you really don't see them. Um, or I will mix um, burnt sienna color with um, paint thinner, like Gamsol uh, Mineral Spirits. It's in this. It looks like I have a science experiment going on here to thin it out, and I will paint or draw out the images like that. And so that itself will... Um, will give me, help me lay down the shapes, the colors, the values, all that, the values for the colors. And if I don't lay enough color down in a certain area, you can see it still because it's not laid down there really well. So I go back and put that color on there and go from there. Okay, took care of that. Let me see here. Marge played by RuPaul. Really? <laughs> That's a <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Of course, I mean we need to get the real Luke, not Jake. Poor Mark Hemmel. Yeah. And who is that guy um, that could play a young um, Luke Skywalker? What's his name? I don't remember. Sebastian Stan. There you go. He could even play. I wouldn't mind him playing. Um, I wouldn't mind him playing Luke Skywalker. Sorry.
let's see here. John Burks does a great Ross impression. I'm going to have to check him out. Soul Assassin got me thinking about Mar Jade, Bob Ross, and Retro Shapes tonight. Ha, ha, ha. Taking it back old school, right? Because even, you know, Mar Jade still was created in the 90s, right? Okay, this jumped. I don't want to miss anybody's comments, but if I do, I'm sorry. So... I don't even want to think about recasting Luke. Alden was once, Alden, what's his name? Pretending to be Harrison was enough. But if we had, what if we had that Anthony in Ingruber? I can't think of his, I can't say his last name. So what if we had him? Because he played a young Harrison Ford in, um, in um, what do you call it? Indiana Jones, right? Like a young Indiana Jones. So what if, would you guys have been pleased with that to have Anthony the winter the winter solider I don't know what you mean on that one I guess he kind of has that look Marge of her sitting or um, sitting for Sidious. No. I mean, she, she doesn't have the body for a Mara Jade. She doesn't have a body for Mara Jade. I'm sorry, she doesn't. Yes, I have my workout um, playlist playing on Spotify. And so that came on right now. I hear the masters. In, in Anthony in Gruber, in Gruber, sorry if I butchered that, would have been perfect casting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Soul Assassin, nice endpoint. Sebastian Stan was Winter Soldier. Okay, that's right. Okay. I was vaguely just remembering I was black I was just want it for the cringe rap. I wouldn't mind seeing Sebastian Stan playing new and original characters in the new trilogy yeah all right so basically I got this here I'll probably just add a little bit of shading here depth here And I think I'm happy, like I said, with everything here. I will just go over these little spots that need to be taken care of. I've got to mix the blues now. I am pleased with the lightsaber. I really think it looks great. This is the Skywalker saber. Not the race Ray saber, Ray Palpatine saber. And if you guys watched my video, I was I knew they named it like a year and a half ago that's when they started classifying it as her saber and now she has her own saber but when i went into disney um the disney store at a local mall i seen it there and then it was posted again on twitter and so i was like ah, i had enough with this crap let's i'm gonna talk about it so that's so i made a video about it jessica jessica Chashton for Mar Jade. Now I think about it. I'm gonna have to take a look. Alden didn't sell Han Solo to me at all. I agree, he didn't, and he was shorter. You could tell in his but his body composition did not match up with Harrison's. Not like um um Anthony. And I think to get people to really believe that this other character is playing the younger one of the beloved character, you not only have to have like the looks, like facial features, but you also have to have the body composition and also like how well they emulate the voice as well. I think there's a lot of factors that go into it, not just, and then, and then um, just to, imp you know, make it believable. OG Star Wars, wouldn't Sebastian Stan make an awesome post-Return of the Jedi look? Yes. Yes, I agree with that. 
I think that would be amazing to have him recasted as um, a young Luke Skywalker post Return of the Jedi. Lord and Miller said they wanted someone playing Han and not doing a Harrison impression. And they mentioned the Star Trek reboot of Chris Pine's Kirk as inspiration. The thing is, is that when, when you have a character or an actor embody the character, you are going to have to basically still get into their character as, as a whole. And um, what I mean by that is when, when we see Harrison Ford and just looking back at the interviews, he just played him how he felt he should be played and Harrison embodied him. And so in a sense, we would have to see them embody Harrison as well as Han, if that makes sense. If I'm not making sense, then I'm sorry. But I mean, just my head alone, like inside my head, there has to be that connection still. And um, Anthony would have been great for that because he already proved himself already in Indiana, a young Indiana Jones. I didn't watch Solo either. Being called Ray Saber is blasphemy. Yes, I agree. The entire Disney trilogy forced blas blasphemy. Yes. The Sentinel, OG Star Wars, that so Pablo Hidalgo said that Luke and Anakin weren't using it, so he insulted someone on Twitter over asking that question after asking why it's called Ray Saber. It doesn't matter because when Obi-Wan gave it to Luke, it was still your fault. He said, your father's Saber. So he didn't say my saber, like Obi-Wan didn't claim it as his. So that doesn't make sense. Okay. Didn't see Solo, couldn't watch it, did enjoy Rogue One though. I did not watch Solo. I will not watch it. I'd rather just sit down and listen or read the Han Solo trilogy where they, they don't um, take away his last name his lineage and his heritage to Corellia. So basically take away his last name and Corellia, his heritage to Corellia by giving him, by having the imps give him a last name. His name was already something that was significant to the planet. There's a lot of history and this solo just bastardized him bad. Saw you tonight on Toxic Femininity. You you all are a real hoot. Thank you. It's it's fun. I love it. And we get to just let loose and just have fun and enjoy talking and sharing our own thoughts and opinions about, you know, pop culture, Star Wars, you know, whatever's going on. Yeah, that was funny. I seen that. The Vijay James. here i've said it before disney was never going to do star wars right the moment they said they don't care about the games i knew they had no idea how to handle the franchise hashtag fuck disney star wars like hey monetized jets working on that we're almost to a thousand pushing 900 and then i think i have like three thousand more hours of view time you know that needs to occur on my channel and then from there we'll get monetized so it's it's coming it's coming and then i have to be a good girl now oh well soul assassin so anthony ingruber for hansel and sebastian stan for luke skywalker who would play leia oh that's a good do you think her daughter can pull it off this is just a random question i don't know i don't know but I don't, I have never thought about that one at all. I've never seen anybody that would be like, oh, that could be a Carrie Fisher Leia character. You're not care. you know what I mean. Wookiee Supremacy, I saw Solo at a friend's house on Redbox. What'd you think about it? What happened to Luke Skywalker Saber? Anyways, I just assume he lost it when he tried to kill Ren or Ben in his sleep. I don't know because I didn't watch it. I watched um, spoilers on Rise of Skywalker, and then I talked to family and friends about it. But I never asked about it. I never asked about the Green Saber. Do you guys? Any of you guys know? 
that's how much I can care. I should know this just to, you know, compare and contrast, but I don't. Let me see here. All right, Wookie, Rookie, Wookie Supremacy. Bottom line is that at the end of the Skywalker saga, and I hate that term. I hate it. Star Wars never had a Skywalker saga. It was just all Star Wars. And now they're like splitting it up into these things here. And it just does not make sense to me. To me, it just doesn't sit right. It doesn't feel right naming the movies the Skywalker saga. And I didn't even finish reading that because I got upset about that. All right. The Palp and with Palpatine, Palpatine winning and stealing the Skywalker name, whoopty funky fucking do. <laughs> Freaking do. I, I added to that. All right. Riff. Hi, Riff. How are you doing? What's up? All right. I've only seen Solo once. I'd much rather read all those solo EU books. Yes, solo trilogy. And I am thinking after I'm done with Legacy of the Force series, I will jump back way back into the solo trilogy and we'll we'll do that. So we'll see. And I'll give you guys a notification. And I'm not, it's not necessarily a book club I'm doing. It just I'm encouraging you to pick it up or or to get um, the audible. And you could follow along if you wish. You can, um, you know, if you want, if you haven't read it before, if you read it before, that's fine as well. But it's just to encourage you. And then when I have my coffee chat, I do discuss the book as well of the week that I post on Tuesday, just to have get people's interest, even if you haven't read it yet, just so you can say, oh crap, I want to get that book. I want to read it. And just to spark everybody's interest in the EU are legends. And I, when they first coined it to legends i hated it and i was i was like i will never buy a product that says legends but now i support that in a sense that when we purchase legends material we're showing disney lucasfilm where we want our content to come from where we want our star wars and where we want to spend our money all right, Billy Lord was would be perfect Leia. I mean, if you were doing a reboot, reboot, she obviously cannot pass for Carrie. Yeah, I get it. Anthony Ingeborg, a new Indiana or new Indian would be pretty cool. Okay, let's see here. Where am I at? I think this jumped big time. I'm sorry if I skipped some of your guys' stuff. I know that the young solo books he had he had a Wookiee look after him yeah duala 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 yeah he did so um when he was raised on um, shrike ship um she was his caretaker she and that's where he learned how to um not speak wookie but translate it because in the original eu wookie language was very hard for humans to emulate or talk or speak or produce the sounds and so, but then we get the Disney solo where he's like talking it like crazy or like saying stuff and it does not make sense. Star Wars movie uh, movies, I mean, the Disney stars. Hi, I mostly, I most likely threw it like the other saber or he most likely, sorry. Tony, I need my glasses on, it's kind of late. The six films by George is the Skywalker saga. Well, what I mean about that when I when I say I don't like the terms the term Skywalker saga is that Star Wars it's Star Wars it was never called the Skywalker saga and it also continued after the movies before the movies and even back in Kator and pre um, prequel trilogy you know there was a few um, that had visions of the Skywalkers like what was hap supposed to happen. In the future and stuff so it was never ever coined the skywalker saga that was star wars it's always been star wars and named star wars throughout the whole board i guess you could say and well that's my take on that i mean let me see laugh out that's me between all the leaks coverage and spoiler reviews i saw enough <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i basically basically saw the movie with all that I think he lost lost his saber in the tent in the Last Jedi when he says bend bend no. I just assume that since Mary Sue didn't 
get it and she got everything else. True. And she ends up with Leia Saber, Saber too. Let's see here. Whoops, it jumped. Are you doing what you do? Wait, are you doing what you do think at this point Star Wars can be salvaged? You think I do you think that Star Wars could be salvaged? Honestly, I don't. Um, like the movie wise, the lore, no, because they already ruined it with the Disney trilogy. Now reinventing and filling in the 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 places like pre prequel trilogy, they have room there to add in their own stories as well. Um, but eventually, everything, and if they do what George did with his franchise, if they link everything to the movies, it still has to make sense to the movies. If they decide to make parallel universes, then it's gonna be all over the place. It's not gonna be the same Star Wars and I don't think they can salvage it. Everything is, is Star Wars, I agree, but George has confirmed again and again that one to six is the story of Anakin. I'm not disputing the story of Anakin or Luke or you know Luke, Anakin. Um, but the movies were never called Star Wars Saga until now. So, I mean, and I love Anakin's story. I love Luke's story. I love what Luke became post Return of the Jedi, where he became what his father was supposed to become. So, I hate when I do that. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to break out of there. All right. It's on my read list. Darth Bane reread. It's next. Okay. So if you're following um, with Ryan and Lethal and them, they're doing the Darth um, Darth Bane trilogy. Book two, I think, is up. I think so. I missed the first one, I believe. So, I mean, you can get into it, get on Twitter, follow, get the information. I don't have that in front of me. I'm sorry. Hey, Tito, how are you doing? How are you doing? Nah, one through six is R2 and 3PO. That's a good point. You know, at one point, and I know George, you know, he says one thing and then changes his mind. And there's always, he's always contradicting what he has said, said in the past um, with, you know, other quotes in the future. So, you know, researching all of George's quotes, I've noticed that that he says one thing here and then says another thing there. So we have to take everything with a grain of salt with him. Actions speak louder than words, though, with what his company's company, company did with Star Wars. So, but what George said, my point is what George said is that basically it's R2 and C-3PO, they're, they're basically telling the stories because they're supposed to be, you know, they're in from the beginning towards the end. So they're, it's like we're kind of seeing it through their eyes in a sense. That's another thing that George said about those characters. So Luke lost the um, um, attempted murder weapon for some reason. He never built another lightsaber after losing his Return of the Jedi one. Yeah. And, you know, Disney didn't have that. It wasn't, let's see here. Carrie and Billy are both the same height, so it's perfect for her to play Leia. And if they would dark, you know, darken her hair to her mother's hair color, maybe we could see a lot more similarities as well. Let's see here. OG Star Wars, I realized that I'm just using that term to delineate G canon from, yeah, that's true. I understand that too. And, you know, all together, G, C, S, all of that, that was established in George's time when he was his company, basically was his, um, that was all, you know, George era Star Wars, that was all canon, that was all together, um, very separate than Disney and even the movies now, I still see them more of a EU than Disney's as well because that was created during that time. They are using it as a foundation, but they fucked it up. 
why was Han inf um, infantry anyways? I thought he was a Imperial Navy. Mm -hmm. And this is in Solo, right? He was infantry in Solo, right? I didn't see it, but I know I, there's one scene I remember him being on the ground and fighting. So if they put him in infantry, that doesn't make sense because Solo always wanted to be a pilot. So if you read the Han Solo trilogy, I'm not even painting anymore. We're just talking. But um, when you read the Han Solo trilogy, he um, he wants to fly. He goes into the Navy. So I don't know. It's weird. I'm going to mix my paint here. So I'm mixing the blue to even this out. See how that goes. So I don't remember one of the blues I used. So we'll see. <laughs> We'll see how good I am with mixing. <laughs> so assassin, no look at Billy. No, it's okay. I'm gonna scroll down here just to catch up with you. You hate beach ball eight. Yes, I do too. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you for joining in. George is like Obi Wan. What I told you is true from a certain point of view. Yeah, he has a lot of that. He has a lot of certain point of views going on. And so that's why as I always say take with a grain of salt because he says one thing in this, like in 2000, for example, like in 96, he says one thing. And then 2001, he says another that kind of contradicts it. But when you look at the business and how it's ran and how his employees are running it, then actions do speak louder than words. Because if I was an employee and I wanted my company to be ran a certain way, and I'm like, okay, my movies are canon and nothing else. Then that's how it should be ran. So that's how I see that. So may you agree with me, you may not. Who knows? There we go. Peter, I am doing well. I just thought I'd get on here and do a little bit of painting and Star Wars chat with you guys. Just, just to have a bit of fun here. I haven't done this in a while. And I don't have to worry about doing a quiz tonight because I am getting my art degree. And so I thought I'd do this and chill with you guys. I haven't painted in a while. I have another painting that I'm doing, but that one is a very private collection one. So I'm not going to show that. I love those videos, by the way. My videos? If you, if that's, if you mean mine, thank you so much. I like it. Thank you. Okay. So the Sentinel, is he the one who says why Clone Wars? Whoops. It jumped. 2002 to 2008 is better than the, than the Clone Wars. Who are you referring to? It jumped a little bit. I do like, um, the the Tartarovsky Tartarovsky Clone Wars more better more so than I like Filoni's because it keeps better continuity. So, but that's again I I like I prefer continuity over a train wreck. And Disney gave us a train wreck. I do though for you guys, for you guys on my channel, and thank you for for supporting me. I do um, keep track of their stuff because I like to compare and contrast and give you guys an idea. Like, okay, this is what Disney did, and this is what the original EU was about, and you guys can um, see the difference. So I did paint. And I just did mix this blue here. I think I need to add a little bit more darker color to that. So that's what I was doing while I was chatting with you guys. Let me check this here. Yeah, infantry solo. Also, this infantry in the movies. Correct. Yeah. Now he went into the Navy. George was a maverick filmmaker. He never should have sold out to this, um, the studio system, which he never trusted good for good and sound reasons. I know. And, you know, he he was at that crossroad of retiring and just, and I do hear debates. People say, well, he sold because people hated the prequel trilogy. Not necessarily. He was retiring as well, and he still wanted Star Wars to be available to us. He still wanted it to continue. If he sold because he didn't like the PT or the people who, he didn't care for the people who hated the PT, then 
I'm pretty sure he wouldn't care of the direction it's gone now and that he would even care he probably wouldn't even care if it dies out or not so that's my take on that no, I think he also goes by the name Captain Porto. Oh, okay. Um, Captain Porto, yes. I love his Clone Wars and his Mandalorian content and what he's doing with his channel. So from what I heard in Disney Comics, Han is a pilot, but in the movie, he's a ground troop. I have no idea. What comics? So what comics is that? Let me see if this blends. Oh, just about nearly. It needs a little bit more darker color to that. Okay, let's try that again. So I have 19 of you guys. If you guys haven't had a chance to please press the like button. If you haven't had a chance to su subscribe to my channel, I'm pushing 900. Please go check it out. Uh, that's still kind of light. That's okay. I'll just have to go over the whole thing with that. Great ghost. It sucks that Millie or Millie Bobby Brown is still too young to play adult Leia. Oh. Let's see where we're at. The Sentinel check out Captain Fordo, and I believe he has a separate channel specifically dedicated to the Mandalorian. Yes, he does. Matthew got it. The st studio systems are bankers, George said. Yes, they do don't know how to make movies. No, they don't. And Disney is a big, Disney's a monopoly company now. So they're a big corporate company. They're a monopoly company selling, um, buying up all different other media properties when it comes to movies and stuff. And pretty soon that's all we're going to have. Everything's going to be owned by Disney and it's not going to be, everything's going to be the same, but maybe in a different light. That's how I see that. I love the droid C3PO R2. K2SO and even BB-8 to how with the one that looks like the hair dryer though. Yes, it does. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't know where they were thinking, what they were thinking of with that. So right now I'm listening to Arctic Monkey. I don't know if you guys know who they are. So that's on my playlist too. And it's called 505. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Okay, let's see what we have here. Nice painting. Thank you so much, Peter. The Sentinel. I re I'm referring to the channel called Caption Porto. Oh, yes. I assume he's talking about um, Gendy Clone Wars, the micro series. He's the one who makes videos telling why Gendy Tar Tartavosky is better than Filoni and explains why the Clone Wars should be separate from the from the yeah timeline. Yes, he does. He has a, He has two videos. Two videos broke down. Broken down. Um, one is more of an explanation. The second one has the actual timeline and it links all the contradictions or all the lore breaking the Clone, Word, Clone Wars does. And it, the Clone Wars also breaks movie lore. So breaks the foundation, basically. That's what I call it. When you break the foundation, then you're breaking the, you know, you're breaking everything. And so it does contradict um, like Revenge of the Sith and other shows too, other movies. The media did more of a criticism damage um, damage to Lucas than the fans, from what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. At that time, it was mostly media that was putting out stuff. OG Star Wars. I made a video about it called "How Bob Iger Seduced George Lucas into Selling His Star Wars to Disney." I'm gonna have to go look that at, look at that. I I would love. I'm very interested. And in if you want to tag it to me on Twitter, I will go watch. I think I might be subscribed to you. If not then I will. And I know that YouTube has been, um, you know, taken unsubscribing us from other channels. I've had to go back and resubscribe to some people. It's very annoying. It's 
Okay, um, George also had a release of the original theatrical trilogy in, in the pipeline and then for some reason changed his mind about releasing them. He would only allow the McClunky edition. <laughs> the McClunky. Another good song coming up. Okay. They said, OG Star Wars, you're right. He wanted to retire because he got remarried and had a kid. Exactly. And um, and didn't want to spend his remaining years making movies that everyone would criticize. Well, in a sense, I think. And then he also stated before, like I said, he says one thing and then does another thing or says another thing. He had to a point said that Return of the Jedi was the end, the happy ending to those set of movies and that he wanted to explore the wills. I know that. Um, so, I mean, if, and then he was afraid to explore the wills because he's seen how much the wills and Metachlorians were not a hit with the fans. However, I would still have watched it because I didn't have a problem with it. It just shared with how the force works inside the body. It didn't tell us that it didn't take, to me, it didn't take away the mystery of the force. It just shows how the force works in the body. Um, there were still a lot of mysteries behind the force. The Sentinel, whoops, I hate when it jumps like that. OG Star Wars, so Bob Iger and KK conspired against him to sell the property. Poor George thought his friend of 40 years, KK would do right by the baby, but she lied to him. Exactly, she did. And I think we kind of discussed that tonight on Toxic Femininity. Yeah, so. Back to me. Oh, look at that. I love it when I match it up. I don't know if you guys see that. here Mara is so pretty oh sorry you are amazing woman um, womanly hair and such gorgeous facial structure and expressions this poem is for you okay there's no greater wonder than the way the face of a young woman fits in the man's mind and stays there. And he could never tell you why. It just seems it was the thing he wanted. Okay. There's no greater wonder by Robert Louis Stevenson. Well, thank you so much. That's, wow. Okay, thank you. I'm like... I don't know what to say just i have thank you you got me speechless thank you have a great night everyone may the force be with you good night if you're going to bed have a good one sweet dreams and thank you for popping in and chatting with us watching me well kind of paint talk star wars just talk in general og star wars um Derang deranged lunatic og star wars they only had a new or they only had a new droid for a cash grab yeah i agree it's it's all about money oh it jumped again i remember watching something where they were talking about creating dio and basically had no idea what he was for then to be cute i agree that's what it was for Matthew got it. I agree, OG Star is about Clone Wars changing the EU lore and Lucas himself changing the lore of the Mandalorians. Was it necessary? I don't think so. I think when Filoni created um, the pacifist Mandalorian, Satine, was it Satine? Sabine? Satine? Um, they made it sound like on one part of Mandalore, there's this passive passive race of Mandalorians. And then you had the Mandalorians that were the warrior societies. And so in a sense, I think George was confused on that. This is just my thought. Um, George was confused on that. And so he was like, well, they're not, the Fets aren't Mandalorians. So meaning that they're not the pacifists. Then when you look at the lore, and that's even in the, the legends and in Disney, 
you can become a Mandalorian just by adoption. And that's what the Fets were. They were Mandalorian by adoption. So to me, they're still Mandalorians. And then Jango and Boba were both Mandalore. So they're both the ruling leaders, warrior leaders. Oh, you're not on Twitter? Okay, I'm gonna, I'll just, I'll go check you out. I'll go check it out. And I'll watch, subscribe if I haven't already. All right. OG Star Wars, have you seen the Clone Wars Season 7 trailer? It's completely contradicts Episode 3 because Anakin didn't know Padme was pregnant until at the battle, uh, after the Battle of Coruscant. Yep. And to me, again, Ahsoka overshadows Anakin. She's like in the for forefront. And that's something I had a problem with with that as well. Um I seen that where it shows that she is holding her pregnant belly. I'm very interested in how close this is to episode three and how that's going to pan out. Star Wars, OG Star Wars. I would love to see that Will story. Me too. I, I would be, I, me, I want to, that's expanding the lore because, you know, we have that in um, the Phantom Menace and he was going to expand on that. And that's, I love the lore. I love how they created Star Wars as one continuum of history. And um, so I would be down to see that, see what they come of that, see, and just be curious on how, how he would unfold that story. Matthew, I didn't consider that canon removing Django and Boba as Mandalorians. No, that's not to me. And when we read Legacy of the Force series that I'm, you know, expanding on right now for my channel, we are on Tempest, but the book before that was Bloodlines. And of course it was um, Karen Travis, who, um, you know, who was the author of that book. And so we had a lot of Django Fett in there. And basically he's the Mandalore in that book. And this is, we're getting, he hasn't been asked by Jaina to train her yet. And their, their story, the Fett's story is so compelling and they're well written in the EU. OG Star Wars, that's the music you're, or what's the music you're listening to right now? I'm listening to Spotify. It is my gym, my workout um, playlist. And, oh, Tool is now on. But that was um, Glass Animals that was playing just a few minutes ago. Now Tool is playing. Let's see here. OG Star Wars, that music. Okay, I already read that one. Great ghost. If Lucas came back, comes back, I'd want him to special edition the sequel trilogy. Maybe he can improve them by adding, deducting stuff. And we talked about that tonight on um, toxic femininity. And he, no matter what he will, ideas he will have, it's not going to be his. He's going to have to go with Disney lore. So, we aren't going to get authentic George. We are going to get him collaborating with Disney Lucasfilm on creating something, but it's not going to be authentic. It's not going to be what originally what George wanted. And um, he has to follow their rules. And we already know that he provided stuff for them in the beginning, all the way up to Rise of Skywalker, and they really didn't use. So I don't have any faith in them bringing him back and using him in his full capacity. Great go. So do you Star Wars? I've noticed that YouTube channel called Fandom Menace was formed by its namesake. I see only upload clips from individual members. Any plans for long um, for long form content there? Like for myself, like if I was going to donate a story from my channel or myself to them, is that what you mean? Stone Cold Jeremy. Well, hello, Stone Cold Jeremy. I love Karen Travis's book. Yeah, I love how she expands the Mandalore War um, story. And oh, I got to be careful. I'm going to get paint all over my face. Um, and I love how um, she basically just, she brings out the culture. And it's it's amazing. Her That was brilliant. Some people don't like her. Some people do. I, I like how she expanded on the Mandalores, the Mandalorians. Bondage Brittany. Why, hello. How are you doing? Welcome to my channel. I don't think I've, I might have seen you before. I'm just vaguely remembering. One thing vampire children have to be taught early on is don't 
run with wooden stakes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Soul Assassin would like to hear news of Karen Travis writing for Mandalorian. She wouldn't wouldn't take KK's nonsense. I agree. And um, but also too, it's um I wonder who's like head friending the story for that. Would she would she work alongside Filoni after what he did with the Mandalorians? Now that's the question to ponder right there. Would she work alongside Filoni for what he did to the Mandalorians? Okay. Of course you're right. The Mandalorian TV series is using the EU lore of Mandos being adopted into Mandalorian society. So Kikyo, KK is okay with John and Dave adapting EU. I thought they had no source material. Exactly. Where's the source material? I agree with that wholeheartedly. Let's see here. I would love to see authentic Lucas just pretend the sequel trilogy did not even exist with everything that happened in the trilogy. No amount of special edition could save or salvage it. I agree. Um, I think if anything, if they're going to save Star Wars, there needs to be a big reboot. If they can decanonize legends for their creative freedom, then they can decanonize these movies and start over. However, they would have to take a huge loss because they didn't make money yet. They never made money from anything yet. I wish, um, Bondage Brittany, I wish our space guys could conquer the earth and make people. Oh, why, hello. Okay. I never liked all Karen Travis, Travis, Travis is hated, or I never, I never liked how Karen Travis hated Jedi and wanted to kill Luke. I hated her killing Mara. Apparently, even Zahn was pissed and not consulted. You know, it's not up to Zahn, it was up to George. He's the one that approves the stories. And so, you know, Mara got approved to be killed just like um, Chewie got approved because they wanted to kill Luke in that part in uh, Vector Prime in A New Jedi Order. George said, nope. And from there, we got Chewy gone. So. All right, let's see here. Sith or Soul Assassin, when the Death Watch troop rescued the young Mandalorian, it instantly reminded me of Django's origin comic book series exactly and i pointed that out i haven't followed up and did any more reviews on the mandalorian after seven and eight i just kind of gave up on it i think maybe i should just do an overall review never late than or better late than never so we'll see So yeah, let's see, let's see here. <sighs> Disney trilogy doesn't exist. Some people are fine with that, not having that. All right. Of course, they did a good story with the aftermath of of Mara's death. It spurred on Jason's fall, becoming Cadus. It did, and I think it was very compelling compared to Ben killing his father. 
because when you look into the history and you read bloodlines in the Disney explained universe, um, Han leaves his family. So Ben never really um, had a relationship with his father, but he, but Jason Solo in comparison had a relationship with Mara Jade because that's his auntie and he confided in her. And, um, you know, so they had that relationship. It was established and her death would not only affect his uncle, but affect his apprentice and then everybody around. So that death was a major, major blow to the Skywalker family. Oh crap. Did that go there? No. There we go. All right. So, Peter, they need to get rid of Kathleen Kennedy first. Now, if they get rid of her, I wonder who would step up if we would have the proper people to step up. Okay, I think I got that all situated for that for the time being. Okay, Let's see here. Okay, let's see. Thoughts on Sherat Het rumored to be in Kenobi. If they bring him back into Kenobi, hmm, I know in the Kenobi book, um, he was um, he met um, Plug Eye. What the, what's her Tuscan name? I forget her Tuscan name. And her Sharat Het or Asher, or no Sharat Het was her brother-in-law, I believe. So during that time, he was already gone. So if they bring him back, they're I think they're bringing him back later than when he originally was um, in the original EU. And I don't think it's going to be the same character. I don't think they're going to tread it. I think they're going to, just like Thrawn, we're going to see a shell of the character. So when they brought Thrawn back, yeah, he had some same characteristics because Zahn was able to rewrite him to fit him in Disney canon. However, he his development and his story was very different still. So we got a shell of a Thrawn that we knew and loved from, Empire, um, from the Thrawn trilogy. Let me read this. Lucas ordered the killing of Anakin Solo still kind of pisses me off as does his supposed hatred of Mara's sight. You know, and I think that I, I really honestly don't think he truly hated Mara, Mara Jade. Um, I think that he, he, um, she served her purpose, but they, um, but he still wanted her killed off. And um, so who knows? I mean, cause he, he was like, oh, I didn't want Luke married. However, he approved Luke being married because he gets to approve the timeline. He gets to approve the characters. He gets to approve what's going on in his stories. So let me see here. What did I miss here? Oh, I didn't finish reading it. I'm not sure if I believe in 100% even if Rens Rensler says George did tell him that. Yeah, the thing is, is I want to hear George. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth himself that he did not like Mara Jade. Because if he did not want Luke married, why the hell did he approve Luke being married? Any movie character in the EU, their story arc was approved by George Lucas. So... That does not make sense to me. If he didn't want Luke married, then she wouldn't be married. 
and I'm going to cover that. And I know some people are going to hate that. I don't care. Um, the thing is, is that, yes, it, when it, especially when it came to his beloved character, Luke Skywalker, anything of his arc, he had to approve. That's including marriage. So think about that. Actions speak louder than words. And I think Rensler was just um, stirring the pot. And um, yeah, George may not like her. And uh, the one thing that he didn't like about her is that he said that her her type of character didn't seem like Star Wars to him in a sense, or maybe her body build, but it doesn't make sense either because we have Twi'leks who are very sexy, structured women, very figured, full or figured women, nice bodies. So that does not make sense to me as well. It's, oh yeah, I let's see here. I'll do it. I don't know what that was about. I must I missed that one. Nice painting. Thank you so much, Jay Zabe. That's a great drawing, OG Star Wars. Thank you. It's a painting. So yeah, thank you so much. Matt Obi Wan Kenobi or Obi Wan killing Het is a bad idea. He is supposed to be Darth Krayt, not die when Luke is a boy. Exactly. And if he ends up killing him, then that, you know that just takes care of um, legacy right there. Takes away, yeah, like the whole legacy because we get the Shadow Man that is supposed to be an essence of Krayt, I guess you can say, and. Um, that's where we see Jason's fall. And then we go further into the timeline of legacy. And then we see Krayt, um help Luke battle Abeloth. And then later on, Krayt is created the one Sith. So that just takes away from that. Got to head out and grab Z's for work in the AM. Glad to have discovered this channel via Fandom Menace live stream subscription. Hit the bell shared. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for becoming a part of this channel. Um, my aim is to continue the love of EU, the original EU and George's era of Star Wars. That's why we're here. Um, before, if you're gonna be here for a couple more seconds, my next painting I'm gonna do live stream is not necessarily Star Wars. It is gonna be um, Batman, like a silhouette of Batman looking up at the signal and um, so I'll be doing that. I like Batman as well. And I think I will sell prints of that. But I believe, if I'm correct, that the original painting is already sold. Let's see here. Good night, OG Star Wars. May the Force be with you. Good night. Taking over Lucasfilm. Who is taking over Lucasfilm? We are. George Lucas um, created Star Wars so that when he says goes, Disney says is invalid. I wish it was still true today. That would be nice. I think they had Luke and Mara as an interim or an item even before Lucas decided Jedi were celibate monks with the within the prequels um which is really was not even a thing until episode two true i think that they needed to do something like that when it came to attachment regarding um anakin and padme i'm just like getting paint all over me So you're heading out make sure to hit the like button and subscribe yes thank you guys so much i know it's getting late here it's coming up at 11 30 and i'm glad you guys are still hanging out with me let me see i'll go to this corner here maybe next live stream i will do put my phone up and have it over the drawing that i or the under painting I'll do of Batman. So you guys can see me do that and see me in action with creating that. Or maybe I'll just do a, um, a time lapse of that. So you guys don't have to be bored with me.
All right. Hi, Teresa Martin. How are you doing? Thank you for dropping in. I appreciate it. Nice. Looking forward to the up, um, upcoming content. Thanks for the heads up tonight. Thank you so much. So tomorrow I should have my lore video up of um, Tempest on my channel, probably by the afternoon, I'm guessing. I should have been prepping for that tonight, but I decided I wanted to paint, finish this beautiful Mara Jade painting. And then um, rather than working on some of the content that I'm supposed to be doing for my next video, but it's okay. So stay tuned for that. It's the Legacy of the Force novel number three, Tempest. And so we have Tenoka, we have Alana Solo in here. Um, we have um, the um, Han and Solo running from Jason because he has a warrant out for their arrest. I mean, it's a very compelling story. Very fun to read. KK, you mean. Let me see. You asked who should replace it. I said, I, I do it. I mean, KK, I mean, oh, you do it. Oh, ah, okay. Which Batman? I'm going to do a silhouette classic Batman. So it's just going to be like a dark silhouette of him. So, um, because I haven't really fully decided exactly which one to go with. So, and I want to do the call sign as well. So maybe I'll show on um, Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, maybe I'll show you an example, my my idea, my th thought process with that one. Kick 44, not bored, just hanging out. Thank you. Perhaps a Batman in Sith robes called the Darth Knight's Knight got the idea from Twitter. Oh, that's an interesting mix up, but would that piss off like true, true Batman fans? I mean, how would that be perceived and taken? So how many of you guys listen to Panic of the Discos? I have that song is on right now. The good, the bad, and the dirty, the song is called. Have a good night. Looking forward to your lore video tomorrow. Thank you, Jefferson. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate your support. I know it's getting late and you guys are all getting ready to go sleep. Thank you for coming in. I'm going to be on here for an extra 15 minutes. 11.45 will close out because I have to get to bed too. I think I'll work on the lore video content, get that prepped and ready to go so that by time... Tomorrow I can just record what I need to do and upload it so you guys can see. I'm excited about that. It's a lore review of the novel. And I also offer clips from the Audible book so that you guys get an idea what's inside the book as well as me telling you guys what's going on and giving some spoilers. Matthew, Adam, Wes, um, Keaton, Bell, Aff Affleck, or Kevin Conroy, Okay, must have missed something there. Kryptonic, hello. Actually love Panic at, at the Disco. Yes, so that's what I'm listening to right now. I have it, my playlist on Shuffle, and they're on there as well. Okay. Haven't heard them in a while. Batman in Sith robes would probably be pretty sweet, and I'm not ex exactly a giant Batman fan. Oh, okay. Kind of exploring both, both lores a little bit. I woke up from my do my doze, Alora. Oh, did I wake you too? I woke up Abu Nas as well, and he went back to sleep. He's seen the notification and popped on to say hello. So this is what I'm doing right now, just finishing her up. Right now, Glass, Glass Animals is playing. So who's familiar with Glass Animals? I have an eclectic list of songs playing on this gym. I have native contemporary music. I have a little bit of rock, um, metal. I have contemporary um, pop. So 
Yeah, it's about 1.30 here. Good night, Bill. Good night. Thank you, Dark Slider, for coming in and joining in the conversation and watching me just paint just a little tiny bit. <laughs> so thank you so much. Deranged Lunatic, OG Star Wars, I hope you are not offended, but you are definitely one of those pretty, the, the prettiest ladies on YouTube. Well, I appreciate that. And no, I'm not offended. Um, I appreciate the comments. You know, I don't see myself that way. I just, this is just who I am, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to answer to that. Of course, I wake up for you, silly. Thank you. Matthew, I am I am darkness. I am the night. I am Batman. Yes, so good. So good. The animated series Mark Hamill as the Joker is good too. Yes, I agree. My baby blue. Okay, I think I touched all the areas I needed to on here. I might go back and add a little bit more shine to some of the metal. Let me see here. I would so love to see Mark Hamill play live action Joker. You think he would do good with that? I mean... I don't know. I never thought about that. That's interesting. here a sith batman and emperor joker lethal or lethal would freak out <laughs> that would be funny to see that would be awesome to see really it would Oh, I'm gonna lose my chair. Almost ate it. That wouldn't have been nice. So it looks like I have 11 of you guys here. If you guys haven't had a chance, press that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Share if you haven't. I mean, it's kind of late. Everybody's probably in bed already. Kryptonic G. I honestly think he would play a good Joker, though he was a great as the trickster on the Flash TV series. Yes. It would be good to see him in a different role. Definitely. Whoops. What happens? The fabric almost looks real. I have no clue how you achieve that effect or maybe the light saber looks like metal, very three dimensional or made the light. Yeah, I just, what I see, I put down on paper or paint or whatever you want to do. So my, I was very nervous about the light saber, the light part, the, the beam, the plasma part. If we're gonna get you know correct on terms um i was very scared because to me i was like how am i gonna emulate that glow of the bright really light blue color right here and then it gets darker as it goes out just to show it's glowing and so i think i did that pretty well for my first time he's doing it with paint um all it is in here is adding colors and shapes. So I built it up with the gray. And then I realized like some of the areas has a blue gray. So I put the blue gray in there. That's the reflection from here. Some areas have the darker color, like the almost black. So I just added it there. 
and then adding the, the shape here of the um, where you attach it on the belts um, or whatever that is, I forget. Just adding the shape and the colors where they need to be creates that 3D effect. So you're just adding shapes and colors. That's all it is, is adding shapes and colors. So Laura, you need to get one of your details for Sotor. I also want to know who you would pick to play Revan. Okay. So, hmm. I am still exploring that era. My my first love and contact was post Return of the Jedi stuff, and I am very aware of Bane and Revan and them. But I never had a chance to play the games. I stopped playing the games. Um, stopped playing games when I um, started dancing in in junior high, and then I played a little bit still, but not fully got. I'd never really fully got back into games. Um, but when I did for a while after high school, um, it was um, Mortal Kombat and uh, Mario Kart and all those. So I still have to. And in fact, I am going to get a um, couture, I think. And I'm going to, you know, do a little bit of gaming on here once I get that downloaded and do a little bit of gaming, Star Wars gaming as well. So I hope that, you know, once I do that, if you guys are into that, you guys will join me on that. Do you sell your paintings? Yes, I do. In fact, this is for sale. I do have a Luke Skywalker for sale. I'll show you now. My hands are kind of dry here. I'm like sliding around in my chair. <laughs> so here he is right here. These are the eight by tens. These are for sale. And the actual 16 by 20 of Luke Skywalker is for sale. And that will be a very different price compared to the prints. But the prints will be numbered and signed by me. And the original painting will be signed by, by me, of course. So here it is. So that's um, Return of the Jedi Luke when he's talking with Jabba and Jabba's palace in his um, area in his palace there. And um, so what I did is I took that image, changed it up a little bit, and made it more of a close up than anything else, just to give it a different look. Keanu re um, Keanu as Revan and Cavall as X Arcoon, in my opinion. I've heard a lot of people wanting. Um, him Keanu as a uh, Revan but do you think Disney could do a good Revan do you think they're even going to keep to a story that's what scares me so I really don't care for any of the EU characters coming back into Disney Star Wars because it's not going to be the same and it's going to piss off people over and over again yeah I am done for I am down for Keanu Reeves as Revan too yep and like I said that's been the popular thing um We need a Phantom Menace Lady game night. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, exactly. And I would do that. I just have to get a game downloaded. I'm just trying to scoot over here. I'm not trying to be all over the place. Okay, there we go. Maybe you should get the legging or legging game with some of your art in the legging game. I do have my own merch. I was going to have leggings. Um, a part of the merch, but with my avatar, her face is not in a very nice, or my face is not in a very nice place. So I didn't do that yet. I might have to rethink the design for the leggings. I cannot picture, I cannot picture who should be Naomi Sunrider in the live action any more than a Mara Jade. I have no imagination or even who should be Shira Bree Lumaya. Oh yes, Lumaya. Hmm. That's a good one. I don't know either. That would be hard. You know Jan Ors from um, Dark Forces? She was an Asian chick. Um, and then she was changed as um Jen Urso, if you notice that, there's that parallel there. And um, 
So would you like with um, no, Nomi Sunrider or any, or not Mar Jade, but any of those characters that could be maybe changed to like an Asian appearing, like featured kind of woman, do you, who do you think that would be? Who do you think? 2.39 a.m. here, heading to bed. Have a good night, OG, and have a good night. Chat, hell. Thank you, Kryptonic, for coming in. I appreciate you hanging out as late as it is or as early as it is. And sweet dreams. Talk to you later. And please press the like button if you have not. Thank you. All right, we're going to begin to wrap up because I do need to get to bed as well. I still need to wash up, get all this off my face. Get everything situated. Um, Deranged Lunatic. OG Star Wars, I hate to leave good company, but it's 1.40 a.m. Yes, we're all going to go to bed. I was told you in 15 minutes at 11.30, and it's almost 11.45. So we have a few more minutes to hang out. I got to fill in what I needed to on here. You know, it amazes me sometimes how quick I can. Um, I'll probably add darker low lights in her hair just to add more texture later. But um, it's amazing how quick and easy sometimes I can mix the colors to exactly match at times. It amazes me sometimes. It's like I take it takes a lot of tries. So, have I finished The Witcher? Yes, I did, and I'm gonna watch it again. Um, I can't wait for the new season to come out. I was hooked, and I think, and maybe you guys may agree with me, but I think it was better than The Mandalorian. I really do. I think they did a good job with it. Kept me engaged and everything. And I wanted to learn more. I wanted to know more. The Mandalorian, there was some episodes where it's like, it. I just didn't catch on to very well. How did you guys like um, The Witcher if you watched it? Supreme Heretic, I can't wait to do an Old Republic chat together with you, Laura, and discuss the game lore deeply. Yes, that would be fun. I can't wait to either. That would be fun. Let's see here. All right, you guys, it is time for me to go. And I'm pretty sure you guys, a lot of you guys that I know are like on the East Coast or, you know, like at least in... Um, Eastern Standard Time, our Central Standard Time. So thank you for hanging out. Good night, Alora. I spelled I spelled it right this time. Yes, thank you. Yes, my name is is very different. Um, what's funny is I'm the oldest of five kids. My name is Alora. Then I have a brother. And then three sisters. And the youngest one, her name is Laura. L a u r a. And um, so it's funny how that goes with the oldest one is Alora, the youngest one is Laura. I don't know why that happened. And I'm not close with my mom to even know why that happened, but that's okay. I mean, there's a story behind that and we're not gonna get into that. I'm not here to give you any pity stories about myself or any um, personal stories. I mean, when the time's right, if I need to talk about it, because I'm not afraid to talk about my, my history because I do that as motivational speaking for Native American women's conferences and stuff and family um, events and stuff, but I'm not gonna engage in it right now. All right, Tito, thank you so much for coming in and good night, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you stopping in. Central time for Seoul, yes. It's about 2.42 and now I am wide awake. <laughs> yes. Nighty, y'all, make sure you leave a like and subscribe on your way out. Thank you so much. Yeah. So thank you guys all for coming in. I appreciate it. There's 11 of you guys. I know um, it's showing on my chat here, Supreme Heretic. I will chat with you soon. Yes. Take care. Continue being that love and light for your mom. That's amazing work that you do for your mom. You know, um, it's, it's, it's. My aunt did that for her mom, and I know how it can be sometimes, and how strenuous it can be, how but but how rewarding as well. So you know that's you have my heart on that for you, 
being there for your mom. So assassin not leaving yet, just spreading the message to all those leaving um, Supreme Heretic. Yes. So when I clean my brushes, just one last thing. This is a coil. It's called um, Silly Coil. So it's a jar with a coil on the bottom and you can brush. I'm not going to, you're not going to be able to see it. And you just brush, rub your brush on there and the Gamzo um, will help you take your paint off. And that's how I clean my brush if anybody ever wants to know how I did that. So, all right, you guys. So have a good night and may the force be with you. And see you tomorrow on Twitter, social media. My lore video is popping up tomorrow by noontime, I hope. You guys have a great, I'll say great day. Have a good night.